Hi everyone, welcome to Electric Vehicle Design Course. I am Nirmala Kumar, a researcher in the field of electric vehicle. We at Dexray design a new kind of electric two-wheeler. So today we are going to learn about one of the key aspects in designing an electric two-wheeler. It's known as tractive force. Unfortunately, this tractive force has many components such as rolling resistance, aerodynamic drag, hill climbing force and acceleration force. So this will be the map of our course. We are going to discuss everything about these forces, develop equations and might do some problems also. So what is tractive force? A certain amount of force is required to move the vehicle forward, overcoming all the resistive forces opposing the motion of the vehicle. This force is known as tractive force. So it is very vital to find the amount of tractive force required to move the vehicle forward while designing an electric vehicle. There are many components of tractive force. Today we will discuss about all of these components and develop equations for each of these ones. Suppose we are moving a vehicle from a point A to point B. There will be various forces involved that will oppose the motion of this vehicle. So we will have to give a force that overcomes all these opposing forces and also makes the vehicle to move forward. Today we are going to find out the value of that force required for an electric vehicle. To be very precise, the components of tractive force are rolling resistance, aerodynamic drag, hill climbing force and the acceleration force. The acceleration force is divided into two, linear acceleration force and angular acceleration force. So now let's go for a ride and analyze each of these force individually. If you look into this picture, we can see that the tire is sliding over the road surface. Two surfaces are in contact and one surface is sliding over the other surface. So a frictional force is produced which is denoted by FRR which opposes the motion of the vehicle. The weight of the vehicle is denoted by Mg and it acts downwards from the center of gravity of the vehicle. Here the road is stationary and the wheels are rolling over this road surface. So Two surfaces are in contact and one surface is sliding over the other surface which causes a rolling resistance. Does the rolling resistance depend upon the velocity of the vehicle? Never. It is important to mention this part also because many people go wrong here. The rolling resistance doesn't have any relationship between the velocity of the vehicle. The equation for rolling resistance is FRR equal to mu RR into M into G where mu rr is the coefficient of friction, m is the mass of the vehicle and g is the acceleration due to gravity. Coming to the coefficient of friction, it depends upon the type of the tire and the air pressure in the tire. If the pressure in the tire is very low, the coefficient of friction will also become low. However, we cannot decrease the pressure in the tire below a particular value. So it is important to maintain an optimum value of tire pressure. The coefficient of friction also depends upon the type of the tire. The figure here shows a radial plate tire. It has a coefficient of friction of 0.015. If you guys are interested in knowing more about coefficient of friction for different kind of tires, we are providing you details in the description box. There are some specially developed tires for electric vehicles. For these tires, the value of coefficient of friction has been even brought down to a value near to 0.005, which is very low. So in short, the rolling resistance only depends upon the coefficient of friction and mass of the vehicle. It has no relationship with the velocity of the vehicle. Now let's go back to our moving car. So assume that our vehicle is moving forward with a velocity of 40 meter per second and we have to increase 
its velocity to 60 meter per second. For that, we should accelerate our vehicle. In order to accelerate the vehicle, we should apply a force. This force must move the vehicle forward as well as it must rotate the wheels more faster. So it has two components as shown in this picture. One component is linear acceleration component which moves the vehicle forward linearly and other is angular acceleration component which rotates the wheels more faster. So this force in total is known as acceleration force. It has two components. One is linear acceleration component whose equation is F LA is equal to M into A which is derived from Newton's laws of motion equation which is very simple to understand and another equation is for angular acceleration f omega a is equal to i into a times g square divided by r square into ng where i is the moment of inertia of the vehicle a is the acceleration of the vehicle and g is the gear ratio and r is the radius of the tire and ng is the efficiency of the gear system which is usually between 85% to 90% So in order to find an angular acceleration force, we need to know the moment of inertia of the vehicle. But in some scenarios, it might be difficult to find the moment of inertia of the vehicle. In that case, we take the angular acceleration as 5% of the linear acceleration. The derivation for equation of angular acceleration force is discussed in another lecture. The other main component of practice force is aerodynamic drag. Have you seen sports cars? If you look into sports car, we can see that the frontal area of these vehicles are kept minimum. Why is this so? It is because while the vehicle is in motion and it is traveling at a very high speed it has to pass through the air ahead of it so the frontal area including the shape protrusions side mirrors etc are kept minimum this opposition force put forward by the air while the vehicle is moving forward is known as aerodynamic drag the velocity of the vehicle and the frontal area are the two important factors which influence the aerodynamic drag. So the equation for aerodynamic drag FAD is equal to half times rho into A into CD into V square where CD is the coefficient of drag and V is the velocity of the vehicle, rho is the density of the air. The aerodynamic drag has a linear relationship between the frontal area and the density of the air as well so if you look into the velocity the aerodynamic drag is proportional to the square of the velocity so at higher speeds the aerodynamic drag will be very high so vehicles traveling at high speeds like sports cars and sports bike their designs must be optimized to make the aerodynamic drag to the minimum value at higher speeds Drag coefficient can be minimized by a good design. There is a lot of flexibility in designing an electric vehicle when compared to a patrolling vehicle. It is due to the fact that there is only less space needed for engine, cooling system and related components while comparing an electric vehicle with a patrolling vehicle. With a good design, it can be minimized up to 0 0.19. For a car, we normally take the value as 0 0.3 in problems and calculations and for buses have larger value it can be above 0 0.7 and EVs in case of electric vehicles it is possible to minimize the coefficient of drag up to 0 0.19 as per current researches and one more thing while designing and for calculations the normal density of air is taken as 1.25 kilogram meter raised to minus 3. While talking about aerodynamic drag it is worth to mention about Tesla Roadster. It is popularly known as the world's fastest electric car. While designing this car they have even avoided the side mirrors to make the aerodynamic drag as minimum as possible.
Now let's assume that our vehicle is moving up a hill. The angle of inclination is assumed as theta. So if you look into the diagram, we can see that a component of weight opposes the motion or the upward motion of the vehicle. And seeing this diagram, you can see that mg sin theta is the component that opposes the motion of the vehicle, uh, where the theta is the angle of inclination. So this force is known as hill climbing force. While a vehicle is moving uphill, a component of weight opposes, uh, to be specific, the sine component of weight opposes the motion of vehicle while moving up and it aids the motion of the vehicle while moving down. That component is FHC, which is equal to mg sin A, where A is the angle of inclination. So guys, in this lecture, we have discussed the various types of forces or the components of tractive force. So this table shows uh, the various components of tractive force and the tractive force is the sum of these components. So in this case, we have to see that while slowing down the component of acceleration force will be considered as negative and while moving down a hill, the component of uh, the hill climbing force is also considered as positive. This is because while moving down a hill, the vehicle weight also assists in the forward motion of the vehicle. So it helps the vehicle to move forward. So it's considered as positive. So guys, from the next lecture onwards, we will discuss about designing an electric two-wheeler and how exactly we can find the tractive force of an electric two-wheeler with an example then we will also discuss about how to select a suitable motor for a particular electric vehicle so thanks for watching this lecture and this table is very important and you should try to remember this or just copy it down or something if you have any doubt regarding this session you can just text me or we can get connected in my linkedin page and discuss thanks for watching thanks everyone